Okay, guys, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to another Agora session here with us. Uh, this, the, the song that you actually uh, just finished hearing was Let's Have a Kiki. I, I think that everybody understood that part that says Let's Have a Kiki uh, by the Scissor Sisters. You may know the Scissor Sisters. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great band. Uh, it, they have some classics among them uh, one of them is i don't feel like dancing you all might hear it sometime in your life you, we are not 15 here so we all know that classic song uh so yeah that was the scissor sisters for you guys um once again welcome everybody thank you so much for joining us today on this new agora session this special edition agora session my name is kike and i alongside sophie hello will be your hosts today. <clears throat> we welcome Mati as well, who is going to be our tech master in the end. Kike, people were asking you for some moves for Let's Have a Kiki. No, uh, we, <laughs> we, can do, we, we can do Let's Have a Kike, uh, but Let's Have a Kiki, it's, it's something completely different. I mean, we'll we can talk about that later. Stuff. Yeah, Perfect. yeah, that's it. We, we, we'll make an Agora session about Let's Have a Kike, uh, but, <laughs> but we'll leave this for another Agora session. Let's focus. Great. Okay, guys. So uh, as you know, the idea is that you're all going to be muted during the session, but of course you will have the chat open and the Q&A section right on the bottom. So feel free to add any comments, thoughts, whatever you would like to ask our guests. But um, our guests may ask you some questions. So if she asks you, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask if you know the answer. Um, so let's get started. I would like to introduce you to our very special guest for today. Mariana Leporón. I don't know if I said the surname correct or not, that was difficult. I was nervous because of pronouncing her surname, but okay. Mario is a talent sourcer. She's been with us at Athena since May this year. She's a slam poetry lover, a trivia facts enthusiast, and she's based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mario, thanks a lot for joining us today, and the mic is all yours. Hi guys, how are you doing? Are you all hearing me okay? Yes, my dear. Yes. Okay, without Perfect. further ado. Hello team and be welcome, one and all. In today's session, raise your coffee mug for a toast. We'll journey through time, a brief exploration into LGBTQ plus history, a celebration. Though facts may be scattered in a chaotic array, they'll make your brains wonder in a curious way. The moments of wonder will travel in rhyme, exploring the tapestry of human life. For in this journey, we'll come to see we're all humans, you and me. Caring about one another is nice to know as we embrace kindness. Let's have a ball. Mm. Cheers. I'm not going to rhyme through the whole session. That would be crazy. So what I'm going to do actually is to tell you what is like being little, um, just a little data point, a little touch point so we can move on forward. Basically, as we all know, Pride is a global commemoration and a celebration in the month of June. We take this time to remember to support the LGBT community to basically support the fight for equality, for visibility and for acceptance. Um, we know this is based upon um, the Stonewall riots in 1969, and ever it has been six decades since, and it grew into a total different thing. It grew into a global event that, thanks to the passing of inclusive legislation around June in certain countries, and the solidarity of other LGBT communities, is celebrated uh, and is regarded as the Pride Month across the world. So. What is Pride and why do we do it? Basically, it serves as a platform to raise awareness, to promote human rights, and to share in joint experiences across, across the globe. So this is why we kind of know why Pride is happening, but Pride is different everywhere. We are an international team. We are strong, strong across many countries. Do you know when Pride is in your city, in your country? Um, do you have any ideas? Is it in June, maybe? Is it not in June, maybe? 
Well, uh, at least here in in Spain, uh, we especially in Madrid because it's it's the capital. Um, it's celebrated during the last um, week of June. Uh, I mean, it's like the whole month is like Pride Month here in Madrid. We have flags absolutely everywhere, uh, and a lot of uh, manifestations and concerts and stuff regarding the topic. Uh, but like the most, um, when, when the most amount of parties and manifestations uh, uh, and stuff related this topic happens is like in the last week of June, at least here in in Spain, right? Mm -hmm. I know, Sophie, in Argentina, when does it happen? Yeah, so in Argentina, we have it in November, the first Saturday of November, in remembrance of the first right organization that was created in 1967, but the first time that it was celebrated was in 1992. Yes, I studied, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sophie, <laughs> look at you. I, 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 I took the time to, um, if anyone else wants to share, maybe some place we haven't mentioned. Anyone would right. like to jump in? If you don't want to, guys, that's okay, that's fine. But if you want to, feel free. Um, so basically, in, in, in Europe, it is generally in June, um, across, across uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, it's in March, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's in February, and it's called Mardi Gras, which is something I didn't know. Um, so, well, although the community is streamed ac across the seas, uh, the whole LGBTQ spectrum um, adopted a flag as a symbol, and the thing about symbols and flags and stuff basically is that um, it grew from the community, but it, it was also adopted by a, high, uh, a bigger community than the one it, it, it was born in. The typical LGBT flag, the rainbow flag we all know and love, um, is from the 19, is from 1978, I'm sorry, 1978. And it was actually designed by Gilbert Baker, who was encouraged to do so by Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk, a, a kind of famous uh, political figure from the States. Um, it saw its, its first fly in June of that same year. Um, and the original design, um, it had eight blocks of color, you know, eight blocks of color. All, each one was, hand dyed and hand sewn by Gilbert Baker himself. Um, and it kind of grew in popularity. Uh, so the symbol was evolving to promote greater inclusion, inclusion and recognition. And it gained a lot of traction after Harvey Milk's assassination. Um, so you know, in order to be able to share it with, with more people and with a bigger audience, Gilbert decided to lose two blocks of color because it was kind of very hard to, uh, to dye that kind of color, um, like it's happening in the Barbie set movie nowadays. They are running out of pink. Um, so Gilbert was originally inspired by Judy Garland's Over the Rainbow, an icon for the LGBTQ people of the 60s, and the Black Liberation Movement, which is kind of an implicit reflection of intersectionality but this intersectionality was explicitly represented in the newest 2018 design. A chevron, this is that triangle, it's called a chevron, uh, and it was introduced presenting LGBT people of color and trans and non-binary people. Um, and to commemorate those who have lost their lives in their fight for, for, <clears throat> for, for human rights, basically. Uh, so, but, you know, these flags aren't like an institution thing. So because there's not like a state or an institution that um, popularizes uh, these things. So basically every flag you have ever seen was kind of created by someone who wanted to create it and it gained popularity. So with that in mind, I would like to make a little game, uh, a little flag game in which um, we are going to vote basically some of the most like iconic flags we have uh, around. Um, I don't know. Yeah, if yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I was going to explain. Guys, in your right down your screen, you have the Kahoot 
uh, logo, you can go over there. You do not need your cell phones. That's one of the most important things ever. You don't need to use your phones. You just use it here in the Kahoot uh, logo that's right over here in your screens. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a little bit so we can have or we're here. You can join here. You can put your game pin over there so everyone can join. The idea is basically continue with uh, the flag topic that Maru was explaining right now. There's a lot of uh, flags in, in terms of the community and we want to, we want to we want you to know which ones they are based on uh, this little game over here. We have at least, Maru, correct me if I'm wrong, but at least we have like 25 flags, different flags, and each flag uh, commemorates one uh, fraction of the big community, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of fun because they grow a lot in numbers, and I I don't know them. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we selected a few because we did not move for we here until three in three of the book at the time. Okay, so uh. We, yes, the, there we go. Now we're talking. Um, so we got 23, uh, 23 here. So uh, if anyone else wants to join us, we're going to have um, two more seconds. So let's you join. Okay, two seconds have passed. Let's begin, right? Mati, please, can you start? There we go. We're going to have uh, some flags over here. And the idea is that you vote which flags do you think uh, this image represents? You got four options, demisexual, bisexual, transgender, and intersex pride. Which flag does this represent? Ooh, come on, guys. You got 10 seconds. Mm. You got to vote fast. But yes, the correct answer is the transgender pride. Most of you got that right. Congratulations. Let's go to the next one. Remember, guys, you got just 10 seconds to vote. So hurry up. Okay, Luke is on top of us. Let's go. Second flag, gay men pride, gender fluid, pansexual or lesbian. Which flag does this represent? Ooh, just one got that right. It was okay. difficult. It was difficult. Who was the lucky one? Celeste. Very good, congratulations. Okay, third flag of the night. By gender, lesbian, polysexual, and intersex pride. Which flag is this community associated with? Lesbian, yes, people, you got that Look right. You, Most of you at least. Nice. I, I think I think Maru that you, you didn't have so much faith in them. I think that's, I, that's I, I, I did have faith. I had faith, but well, faith. It's not that so much, enough. not that much. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, so let's strike. Let's go with the next one. Non-binary, bisexual, asexual, or gender queer. Which flag does this community is represented with? 19 answers. Ooh, only one got that right. This was the wow. bisexual pride. And who got that right? Oh, come on. <laughs> She's an expert. Last. Amazing. <laughs> you, you, just, you, you, you beat everyone. I know people from all, in all the groups. Let's, let's see if you got every single flag right. Polyamory, agender, bigender, non-binary. Which flag does this represent? Nice. Yes. Non-binary pride. You guys, are, most of you are correct. 
So, who won? Third place, we got Juan. Okay, congrats. Second place, you got Vicky Combran. I think we all know who won. <laughs> Drums. <laughs> Celeste like, has the dinosaur with pancakes on top. Congratulations. Congratulations, nice. Celeste. You win the honor of knowing you were right, which is nice. Um, oh. Knowing, knowing Celeste, she's gonna be, she's gonna have a great day because she knows that she got that right. So, uh, Celeste, this one amazing, nice. Thank done. you so much. Loved it. <laughs> um, so basically, okay. Uh, shall I continue? Yeah, Please. that's okay. That the, that's the nice uh, display. Um, so, why are we talking about flags? Why is this important? Well, basically, um, I also love history. I love history and I like thinking about things. So one of the ways uh, we, we can study history is through different lenses, right? Through the economical lens, through the historical, well, no, not historical lens, but this would be like the ideas history, which means investigating the development and spread of ideas, philosophies, and knowledge throughout the years. But this is not the only way of thinking about our recent past. In Argentina, we have a common saying that uh, means that, that says, X thing did not come out of a cabbage, you know, X no salió de un repollo. So why <laughs> am I saying this? Because queer people are born in a community, are inherently part of their own communities and their own, um, you know, uh, groups of importance. And in recent history, we have seen countless stories of LGBTQ people being excluded from their communities, from public life, sometimes hindering their livelihood or even their health or well-being. We have a lot of examples about this. So I would like to focus on something that shows the capacity for solidarity and compassion. The AIDS Memorial Quilt is a powerful symbol that exemplifies the spirit of solidarity and remembrance. It is a large scale community-driven project that emerged during the height of the HIV crisis in the 1980s and 1990s. The quilt, a quilt is a, you know, um, a nice warm blanket made of different like little blocks of, of textile um, wool. Um, and they are, you know, um, they have a rich history of being made by communities and for individuals to provide warmth, comfort, support, and they are associated with home and with family and with, you know, creating um, a place where someone is comfortable. Um, so uh, the Memorial Quilt was uh, a project um, that started small. Um, nowadays, um, people can go adding panels uh, to remember loved ones who have passed or because they wish to afford to give something to the to the project and right now it exceeds 1.3 million square feet in size. That's a very high number for my little human brain, monkey brain to understand. That is 15 professional football fields of something football. like something like this. Right? So yeah. so so we yeah, can yeah. Wow. We, we can get a, a proper dimension of what we are talking about in the capital back in, in Washington DC and both in the White House that's, that's in front of it. So it's, it's quite huge. Big. And like yeah. each little panel is like uh, small. So it's a really uh, nice thing um, to think about. Um, and this could be environmental history, exploring the interactions between human societies and their natural surroundings and how both influence one another. Um, we're going to move over now to, um, yeah, uh, we're going to move over now to some important folks that I would like to remember, to think about. Not remember because Wendy Carlos, as we're seeing right now, is alive and she's doing fine. Um, please, please don't, don't, don't kill her yet. I mean, no, give no. her some time, at least to have fun. She, she, she still, she, I mean, she was born in 39, so 
she is uh, still good and kicking. Um, she she you... she's definitely playing extra time. I mean, she yeah. she's right over there. She's almost in penalties. Yeah. <laughs> um, but well, Wendy Carlos uh, is an American composer, electronic music pioneer. Um, she is renowned for her inno innovative work with synthesizers and her contributions to the field of electronic music. Um, if you like music in general, you have been affected uh, positively by her. Um, she helped create the mood board, uh, which uh, is, if anyone knows about music, they know this was a big deal. And she, you may already have heard her music, uh, most likely. If you, um, list, if you have seen Kubrick's Clockwork Orange, La Naranja Mecánica in Spanish, uh, she did the soundtrack. She did the soundtrack for Tron. She did an amazing um, album uh, that you can't find anywhere because she's very anti-Spotify uh, and all those sort of things. Um, and basically, she's kind of a badass. Uh, and if we pull a little bit from the strings of time and we follow a little small thread, we can see a little line that takes us back to Alan Turing. Why, would you ask? Are you pulling the strings a little bit? Yes, I am. But Alan Turing was an amazing um, pioneer. He laid the foundation for modern computing. He developed concepts such as the universal Turing machine, algorithms, and his remarkable achievements continue to shape advancements in technology today. Uh, our actual jobs at Athena uh, in the IT market sector we occupy are kind of, uh, you know, still influenced by Alan Turing's uh, work in the past. In the um, past. So we're going to move on. We're going to actually go back in the past um, to go back in time to the 1920s. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Sarah Baker. I love Sarah Baker because she, um, she is an important piece of the puzzle uh, of a nice uh, um, little historical uh, data um, thing we kind of love, which is she was very important in catching Typhoid Mary Typhoid Mary was a woman that uh, basically spread typhoid all around New York City in the 1940s, I think. And she was caught basically by Josephine Baker. She was very smart and she was very, um, she was very dedicated to contribute her efforts to public health and address infectious disease and promote measures to prevent the spread in urban environments. Um, basically, she is awesome. She started the New York's Bureau of Child Hygiene and was an instrumental force in um, material health and child health in the uh, United States. She ended her, her days uh, enjoying a Boston marriage, what, which was called like that back then, um, with her wife and a friend uh, upstate. And what do these people have in common? Yes, they are part of the LGBTQ plus people but they were also, um, you know, innovators and they are a way of understanding our past uh, through the great figures history. You know, uh, you talk about Na Napoleon and you talk about France, you know, it's nice to like use a focal point to understand the context better. Um, so these are, you know, some individuals who shape historical events. And now that we are kind of in a little bit more of the random aspect of the of the data parts. I would like to play a, a game. <laughs> um, yes, this is a game that has to do with history as well. Uh, ju just to, just to make a point, we, uh, Maru, uh, we are completely sure that Sarah Josephine Baker she's not playing extra time, right? I mean, she she just just. What? Passed. I'm sorry. I... Right. She, I mean, she's not bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that doesn't matter. Okay, let <laughs> let's go straight to it, guys. Um, let let's play a little bit, a little slido. So again, once again, um, write down your screens in the in the bottom 
right of your screens, you'll find the Slido uh, logo. Again, you do not need your phones. You do not need anything. So as soon as um, it show it shows up, uh, we'll let you know. So there's uh, some questions regarding historical aspects, uh, historical facts, basically. Um, you know, T, we are we are just working on that. Uh, we'll almost have the, the slide uh, as, as soon as possible. So that's why I'm explaining the game. So um, there you go. There you have the slide. So you can open up. You'll have the you'll have the questions over there, and we'll we'll start. So, uh, which is the largest pride parade in the world? You got four options. You got New York City. You got Madrid, hometown. You got Sao Paulo, and you got London. Which city uh, does uh, does do host the largest pride parade in the world? You guys know. I know this I one. Know. You know this one? <laughs> the only one. I know this one too. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's see. So we got 21 votes. Keep them coming, guys. We are 29 in here. I already vote. I mean uh, and I and I vote sincerely what I thought it was the correct answer before knowing the answer. Uh so if you guys already voted. We have a winner, and the winner is no, 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 really, really, really. I, I voted what I what I thought it was, and the winner, guys, is incorrect. New York City is the winner, and New York City do not host the largest pride parade in the world. Maru, who, which city uh, hosted? Sao Paulo is the largest Pride Parade, averaging on 5 million people each Pride. Um, then we have New York City, averaging in 4 million. Uh, then Madrid, 4.5 million. And I actually don't have the London statistics. I weirdly have the Sydney's Mardi Gras, which is 200,000. Two, wow. 200,000. Yeah, 200,000. Oh. Is that a, a, a number correctly said in English? I don't know. Yes. Uh, six, six zeros. Six units. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. Two, 200,000. That's it. That's yeah. it. You got that right. Um, so um, I'm going to give a little, um, uh, just a, if you want to go to the next one, I will give a little um, explanation and just oh, as. Uh, um you can ask me any like what what is this uh like what is why is this here uh like a, a, if you have an, a question about an item let me know i will answer it everything has like a meaning and a thing here so um there was a very popular euphemism in the 1950s uh which you know um used by the lgbt uh, population like a slang so um Basically, it was like, mm, you know, uh, your friend, is he a... <laughs> so basically, that is it. These are your um, these are your options. So I won't say any more right now, but... Okay, mean, uh, in the meantime, while everyone, everyone votes, we will do uh, a formal request to our HR department. So we got Kuku here asking if we uh, if we can all do a team travel to Sao Paulo. I'm in. I'm um, in. So uh, Maru, uh, we have Male that doesn't quite get this. Uh, you, you want to explain it again so everyone can understand what we are asking? I'm sorry, let's go again. Oh, no, you're uh, good, you're good. <laughs> so, um, Basically, you have to complete with what you think the euphemism was, you know, like the way of saying something without saying it. So, are you a friend of Judy? Are you a friend of Sappho? Are you a like, which is the correct name people used back then to mean, um, you know, if you were a friend of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you were basically a queer person. Like, if you were asking like about a friend because you were interested in them, you would like, say like hmm, is your friend a friend of blah 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 was that that's it so clear? so i i would i would actually uh we we will meet back in the in the 1950 
and I will, I will approach you and, and I'll ask you like, hey, Maru, are you a friend of, let's call it Pepe, to be like <laughs> objective and nobody knows who we're talking about. Are you a friend of Pepe? And if, you would, if your answer would be yes, uh, I would know uh, if you are a queer person, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's perfectly that's correct. Awesome. So, guys, this I know. I know this is tricky. I know that most of you probably do not know this answer, uh, but we want. I'm not you sure to about know. that, Ike. No, you, you think you think that I'm you think that I'm 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 mm -hmm. not having so much faith in our yeah. company. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You know what? After 21 votes, uh, are well. I hope yes. I hope the answer is yes, Google. Thanks, thanks for asking. Um, uh, I, I, I actually was was wrong, Sophie, because yeah. uh, twenty one guys here in Athena voted that uh, Dorothy is the right answer, yeah. and Maru. That is correct. They got it right. That is correct, and it may it may not be because of what you think it is, because. Uh, there are there are three possible explanations for the use of the phrase a friend of Dorothy. Um, first, we have the movie, you know, uh, Wizard of Oz, a very popular um, musical, very loved by the LGBTQs. Um, um, we have that. Then we have uh, basically Judy Garland was uh, an icon, so everybody kind of loved her. So we also have that. And then we have um, Dorothy Parker. Dorothy, Dorothy Parker was um, a, an, an NYC socialite in the 1920s and 30s. And she would, she would enjoy throwing amazing balls and parties and everyone wanted to come. And she was famously surrounded by gay people. And they would uh, use that as a phrase to get in the door. Like, I'm a friend of Dorothy. And then it kind of moved on. So that is the most um, known acception of that. Um, Ernest is just uh, another term, but we won't go in there. Um, but yeah, it was like a furtive way of inquiring about someone's sexual orientation. Um, okay. I don't know if, if we can move on to the next one. Do we have, yes. do you, anyone has any question about anything right now? Should we move on? Yeah, I, I, th I mean, if, if anyone has a question, he or she can perfectly put it in the chat or in the Q&A section here, guys, down in your screen. So next question, uh, another historical fact. Uh, the oldest known record of a same gender union was in a lot of time ago. We can we can see that in your screens. Maybe it was in the period in the period. Uh, Maitolage? I don't know if I got that uh, right. Uh, pirates pirates Maitolage. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, then we got the sacred band of thieves. That sounds something like a jazz band, but it was like a, a couple of thousand years ago. Um, then we got the ancient Egypt. Uh, yes, another couple, two couple of thousand years ago. And the last uh, possible answer is the Japan's Tokugawa period. Uh, that, that was just a couple of years ago. My pronunciation was good, Haru? Approved? Incre inc incredible. Amazing. In incredible. Okay, in great. So, uh, guys, let's go with it. We got 19 votes. Uh, we got 28 people here uh, in this Agora session. We need you to vote. So please vote, 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 and vote. But in the meantime, while you guys vote, Sophie, can you can you check the responses? You do you know who's winning for the time being? I know, I know, and I think that people got it correct once again. Do Do you nice. think that people actually got that correct? They, yeah, That's they know. Amazing. They know about this. That's, yeah. I mean, it has surprised me, and and I think it has surprised a lot of us. So, Maru, would you please be so kind to? Uh, explain what's the correct answer on this? Of course. Well, the correct answer is kind of basically uh, ancient Egypt. Um, archaeologists recently dug up two male royal court manic manicurists named, and I'm not going to name them because that would be no. very uh, bad. 
for everyone, um, very disres disrespectful. So they, I will only say that they were found buried together in a shared tomb in a similar way to how married couples at the time were like disposed of and were like presented. Um, and they were nose to nose in a close embrace. Oh, isn't that sweet? Um, the other data points of the uh, of this little question are all true. I mean, they are all like historical records of same like same gender unions or anything of uh, like a parents' marriage. Age basically, was like a marriage of the sea, and if a partner died, their partner would inherit their things and their like their money and like a ship maybe. So it was like a very cool thing for them to have. Um, and the Sacred Band of Thieves was um, a legion, a Roman legion that uh, was active uh, from, yeah, from the 78 to 38. And they never lost a battle until uh, or the last one. But it was like 40 years of won battles and it was a legion comprised of married men. Like 300 men, 150 couples. Am I saying that correct? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And the idea behind that was that they would like fight, you know, m more fiercely to like protect themselves and their partner. So that's a nice little tidbit of information. Um, so, so the Sacred Thieves uh, band what wasn't actually a jazz band, as it sounds, right? So it, it wasn't created the jazz band. So, guys, please. If anybody wants to create a jazz band, you got the name. Please use the name. It's like the most creative name for a jazz band I've ever heard in my life. Please do so. It is a great name, actually. Like, historians are not usually good at naming things, but this was, like, nicely done. Um, That's it? Yeah. That's it, so... Uh, um, Maru, uh, we have a question here. Yeah. Uh, Kuku's asking... Uh, who invented the wrong answers? <laughs> I uh, did. You want to answer that? <laughs> I did. Uh, it was just, you know, uh, some other things that are kind of true, but maybe aren't the oldest. Um, so, yeah, they, it was, they were all like little things I would like, I would have liked to like talk about, but I couldn't find like a way of like waving them into the, into the script. So it was like, oh, this is a nice way of talking about this. That's I know. May I? Great. May I add something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not the same as <clears throat> well LGBT, LGBT, but uh, I know that in the Polynes or Polynesia, um, <clears throat> years ago, when you have your first child was born as a male, they converted into a female. Because they wanted to, uh, they wanted that person, that child, to became the, to become the king's um, wife. So every firstborn child was supposed to be uh, a girl. So if they if they wasn't, then they changed it, and they were um, educated since day one as girls. So they had to dress like they like girls uh, act like such. They didn't have like the, <clears throat> maybe any surgery, any transgender mm -hmm. surgery, but they were supposed to live as uh, as girls instead of as, as boys. Well, there's wow. a lot of like little uh, things like that, Cuckoo. Uh, I know that like in Romania, um, there's like uh, um, some people like, some women like um, identified as as male, and it's kind of like accepted uh, in the society. Like it's very common, and it's like something from way back when. So these little like gender things that are like strewn across history and the world are kind of like this has always been happening, you know. Uh, so it's nice to know. Thank you, Kuku. That was an amazing fact. Um, Clary, it, it, it's Clary. Just to, just to clarify, uh, it was Clary. I'm sorry. I'm in my phone, and I was like. It's very small. <laughs> you, you saw us. Uh, see, it's clear. It's clear. So, um, guys, we are finally reaching the end. I know, Maru, if you want to add anything else, or you I want have to a little wrap-up, a little sign-off. Uh, so, go. we're going to go with that. 
Um, well, basically, I am very biased towards the social and cultural lens for history. It is my favorite way of understanding others, which I think coincides with why it's nice to talk about these topics in the workplace. Understanding more about others help us forge stronger connections and foster a supportive space. By embracing diverse perspective, we cultivate empathy and grace. So I will finish this last idea with a little sign off poem, okay? As we conclude this journey, let us embrace social and cultural history, captivating gaze. Though the lives of everyday people, we explore their passions, wishes, struggles, and more. In the tapestry of time, we find our place, understanding others, their joys, their joys and their chase. For equality and rights, we strive with our might, not merely to be liked, but to stand for what's right. In the cosmos of existence, let empathy guide as we see reflections of, our, of ourselves side by side. Showcasing the tapestry of human delight, thank you for joining me on this captivating ride. And that is it. <laughs> Amazing, Maru. Thank you Amazing. so much. Amazing! What what a, what a nice touch uh, to to finish to close to wrap up this uh, special agora session. So, guys, the mic is open uh, for yes, everyone um... whoever wants to comment to say something tomorrow to the topic to the Pride Month. Please do so. Thank you, Manu. It was awesome. I think it's one of my favorite um, Agora sessions. Thank you very much for making it so cool. Thank you so much. No, and I want to say thank you so much. Maru joined Athena like a month ago and she already thank put you, herself here out. So I think this is huge. So huge claps for you, Maru. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. They have uh, been great and they uh, thank you guys. Thank you, Kike. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Mati. Thank, thank you, thank you, Maru. As as Mai just said, thank you for for your effort because it is a, a real, real effort to uh, to start in a company like new guy in the company, and you just embrace that. You embrace all the intro calls and stuff, and besides that, you worked on this. Uh, so thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you once again. Mati, um, Kuku, T, and Sophie for being a part of this. Remember, guys, to check our interactive mural as we already displayed it in the Slack and in the internal newsletter that I hope you all guys read it, okay? Um, besides that, I want to thank you all for being here, for sharing knowledge time with us. We hope you guys enjoy it and see you for the next Agora session next month. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.